everyone, let's take a look at completing the square and how we solve a quadratic equation by completing the square with an uglier looking equation than what we saw in example three. I want you to take note that the lead coefficient is not one here. So if you want to solve a quadratic equation where you have ax squared plus bx plus c equaling zero, by completing the square, we're gonna use these steps. So if a isn't equal to one, you have to divide both sides of the equation by a. So that's what we're gonna to have to do initially for example four. Whereas in example three, a was one, so I could just skip step one. We're gonna rewrite the equation so that the constant term is alone on one side of the equality symbol. So I'm gonna wind up moving the five, or really five fourths once we divide, I'm gonna move it to the other side. We're gonna square half of the coefficient in front of the x term and add this square to each side of the equation and then we will factor the resulting trinomial as a perfect square and combine like terms on the other side. And then we'll use the square root property to compete, excuse me, to complete the solution. So let's go through this a step at a time. So step one says if a doesn't equal one, divide both sides of the equation by a. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna divide both sides of this equation by four. And then we're gonna alien errors all of these. So ultimately my equation now, 4x squared over four is x squared, 6x over four is three halves x, and then five over four is just five fourths. That's gonna be equal to zero. Okay, great. Step two says rewrite the equation so that the constant term is alone on one side of the equality symbol. So that means I need to move this symbol, this, excuse me, this term, to the right side of my equation. Okay, great. So here was step one, right? I'm gonna do step two here. So I'm looking at x squared plus three halves x, and I'm gonna leave some space and I get negative five fourths, okay? All right, now the fun begins. You need to square half of the coefficient of x and add this square to each side of the equation. Hold on, I'm gonna sneeze, give me a sec. Or is it gonna go away? No, it's here. Excuse me, okay. So square half of the coefficient of x. Here is the coefficient of x. I need half of this symbol, okay? So I'm gonna do half of this symbol squared. So what I'm about to do, I will come back to this, this paper in a moment, but I'm gonna kick it over to my calculator because I wanna talk about how your calculator can help you with fractions. So give me a moment. We're gonna head over to my calculator and then we're gonna come back to this, this example. Hey Matt 31, I just wanna to touch base with you and show you a pretty cool calculator function to help you with fractions that I find super useful and I, I just wanna point it out so you know it exists on your TI-8384. And I would imagine most scientific calculators have some version of this. I just don't know exactly where it would live on your calculator. So when we left off, we were at the part where we needed to square half of the coefficient, at least half of the coefficient on the linear term. We're gonna take half of it, square it, and add that square to each side of the equation. So let me get my pen up here. So that means I'm gonna take half of this number, half of three halves, whatever that's equal to, square it and add it to both sides of the equation. Now, if you remember, if I wanna divide a fraction or divide any number by two, that's like multiplying by the reciprocal. So taking three halves, dividing it by two is like multiplying it by one half. And then when you multiply fractions, you multiply numerators, multiply denominators, and you're gonna get this three fourths. And then when I square three fourths, I actually can distribute that exponent to the numerator and denominator. You're allowed to distribute powers like that if there's multiplication or division in the parentheses, if you had addition and subtraction in the parentheses, you couldn't distribute those exponents. And I would get 9 16 And when we flip back to my, my written video where I'm writing on the page, you're gonna see me add 9 16 to both sides. And that's all fine and good, but I think some of us have a, a little bit of a like, mm, fractions aren't my favorite. So I wanna show you how your calculator can help you. So let me undo my pen and go over here. All right. So what I can do is I can take three halves. Now I'm gonna put it in parentheses. It's always a good habit to get into putting your parentheses, especially your numerator and denominators, if they're binomials. Right now they're just numbers, so it's fine. But it's a great habit to get in. 
to protecting your, your fractions with parentheses. So I would like to take 3 halves and divide it by 2, okay? And then I'm going to hit enter, and my calculator is going to tell me, hey, that's 0.75. Great. All right, now I can hit this button here where it says x squared because I need to take half of that linear term, or at least half of that linear coefficient, and square it, and I hit enter, and I'm looking at 0.5625. And you probably don't recognize that as the fraction 9 16 like, I don't. Um, so I, if you do, more power to you. But there's a button that will convert decimals to fractions. So if you hit your math button, there's a whole menu that pops up, but take a look at that first menu item. You see the little triangle with the fraction? So I'm going to hit enter. You can either hit enter or you can hit the one button. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to hit enter, and you'll see it says I'm going to take your most previous answer, which is 0.5625, and I'm going to convert it to a fraction. So I'm going to hit enter again, and there's my calculator saying, hey, it was 9 sixteenths. So that is awesome. Your calculator can take decimals and convert them to fractions for you, which is, which is great. So we've got that option there for us. Um, I do want to point out, let's just practice a couple of other things because I want to show you um, when this might not work. And, um, and then I want to show you how to go back. So here, here's what I mean, Let, let's go back. So if I hit math, okay, if you look at the second menu item, you see the little triangle with the DEC, that stands for decimal. So I'm going to hit option two this time. So I can either click on the number two or I can hit the down arrow button and go to two. What this is going to do is take your previous answer, which was 9 16 and it's going to convert it back to a decimal. So if you ever wanted your answer in a decimal, not a fraction, and for whatever reason you were dealing with a fraction, it can convert it back for you. Um, it's just as easy to just enter in 9 16 and say enter, and it'll give you the decimal anyways, but I think it's good for you to see how your calculator is set up. So if I had some big fraction like, I don't know, 252 divided by 1,000 and, or 1,008, right? And I'm not sure what it simplifies to. I'll hit enter, right? Oh my gosh, and it's 0.25, well, okay. And then if I hit math frac, it'll convert it for me. All right, now there, there's gonna be some times where it doesn't convert it, and I'll show you what I mean. Um, let's take our favorite constant in math, pi. If you see the pi, it's over that little caret key that's gonna wind up being our exponent key later on, but you'll see pi is in blue, so I'm gonna hit the blue button to activate the blue pi, okay? And then I'm gonna ask my calculator to convert that to a fraction. Now, just in case you don't remember what pi is equal to, we're rocking the 3.14, right, on March 14th. We all eat some pie, celebrate Pi Day. But if I hit math and I hit frac, right, and it pops back out the same number, that's your calculator's way of telling you you can't convert this to a fraction. And there are plenty of numbers out there that are irrational. Literally, they can't be made into a rational number, a fraction. Um, square roots are the most obvious ones, or maybe not obvious, but the most common. So like the square root of two. If I wanted to convert that to a fraction, my calculator would say like, thanks for playing, here's the decimal version of it. So math frac, it will always work in that it'll either give you the fraction or it will tell you, hey, I can't write this as a fraction. So just to recap, right, we took that linear coefficient, three halves, all right, I divided it by two, protected it with some parentheses, divided it by two, squared that number, and then I converted it to a fraction, nine sixteenths. All right, so with that, I'm going to flip back to my written page, and then we're going to finish this problem out. I'll see you in a few. Bye. Okay, guys, we're back. I, I just want to review up all of that calculator work. So again, if I'm here, I'm going to, let's clear this out. I'm going to go ahead and do three halves divided by two, right? And I get 0.75. So let me remember that number. But really, I want to remember it as a fraction. So I can hit the math symbol and say, go ahead and put that as a fraction. So I'm going to remember that that's three fourths. All right, so let me do my work here. So three halves divided by two is like saying three halves times one half, which is three fourths. All right, and then I wanna take that number and square it. And again, I, I would just like my calculator to do that. So let me go ahead and say, hey, can you please square that? And it gives me a decimal. But if I hit math frac, I learn that it's nine sixteenths. 
and we could have seen it was 9 16 anyways, but I just want us to point that out. All right, so I'm gonna add 9 16 to both sides. All right, so I squared half of the coefficient of x, and I added that square, right, the square to each side of the equation. So let's simplify the right side. Now again, if you've added fractions before, you need common denominators. So I can multiply this by four over four, add the common denominators, but let's just be a little bit smarter about that. Let's use technology. So if I'm on my calculator, let me clear this out, I can take negative 5 fourths and add 9 sixteenths to it and hit enter. Again, my calculator will give me a decimal and I can hit math frac and my calculator will just tell me that was negative 11 sixteenths. So let me write that here. But I also want to go over a typical calculator error. So I want you to notice the negative symbol here, right? It's pretty small and it's a little bit higher up than halfway. And, and I mentioned that because I, I've said before, there are two subtraction looking signs, but one is the negative symbol and one is the subtraction symbol. So I used this one for this problem because I had a negative five fourths. Watch what would happen, and I know I just moved this, but watch what would happen if I hit this button. I want you to see what this looks like. If I hit subtract 5 fourths plus 9 sixteenths, you see something funky happening, right? It's, it's not working. And you see this subtraction symbol is a lot larger, right? It's longer and more in the middle of the number five where this is shorter and up towards the top of the number five. And what your calculator is doing is when you hit subtract the subtraction symbol, it needs to subtract from some number and it's just gonna default to the previous answer. So this is completely off, right? So you just wanna be careful when you're using either the negative symbol or the subtraction symbol on your calculator. All right, so ultimately I have negative 11 sixteenths on the right side of my equation and this is now a perfect square trinomial. It will be x plus and let's see what it would be. It's always half of the linear term, so that is x plus 3 fourths quantity squared. Okay, great. Now it's time to use the square, square root property. So let's square root both sides, and I will get that x plus 3 fourths is equal to the positive or negative square root of a negative 11 over 16. Okay, we can handle this. We know whenever we have the square root of a negative, the first thing that we're gonna to need to do is take the i out. I'm gonna scooch this up just so we have more room to work with here, a little bit more space. Okay, so this is going to be x plus 3 fourths will equal plus or minus i times the square root of 11 over 16. Now I can rewrite this as plus or minus the square root of 11 over the square root of 16. You are allowed to distribute a radical over division, right? You can distribute radicals over multiplication and division, but not over addition and subtraction. So now I'm looking at x plus 3 fourths will be equal to, oops, I'm sorry, I just noticed I dropped the i. This will be plus or minus i times the square root of 11 over 4, because the square root of 16 is 4. All right, so then let me move this three-fourths over, I'm going to subtract three-fourths from both sides, okay? And if, I'm going to just write this over here. So these are going to cancel out. I'm going to get x on the left side, which is great, and I will have negative three-fourths plus or minus i times the square root of 11 over 4, which is a totally acceptable answer. I want you to hear that's awesome. But I just want you to see a different way to write it if you wanted to. This is in standard form, right? We have a plus bi, so our a is negative three over four, and our b is the square root of 11 over four, great. But I just want you to see this is also equal, since these have common denominators, I could write this as four and negative three plus or minus i root of 11. All right, so let's make sure we're clear. These are both acceptable answers. All right, so we've taken a look at a couple versions of completing the square. The next one we're gonna get to is the quadratic formula. I'll see you in a bit, bye.